Hi everybody, Captain L speaking. Welcome to Training Tips, designed to help make you a better, more knowledgeable flight simmer, pilot, or aviation enthusiast. Have a seat. Let's strap in and stow the HUD and see what is on the horizon for today. Our briefing today will cover the flight management system. We're looking at an overview of the FMS or flight management system. The flight management system allows us to uh, fly the airplane in an efficient manner both uh, laterally and vertically using the auto throttle system and the autopilot flight director system through the mode control panel. We have uh, three CDUs or uh, control display units. Sometimes these are referred to as FMS CDUs, flight management system control display units or CDU for short, control display unit. We have a left, a center, and a right CDU. Normally the left and right are used by the captain and the first officer for their interface to the flight management computers. The center CDU is usually a, you can think of it as a spare. It's uh, of particular interest to maintenance. Uh, we can have satellite communications uh, on it. Uh, from the menu page, we could display ACARS information if the airline has ACARS. Uh, or in more modern aircraft or more or later model aircraft, they can also be used as a spare CDU. We also have two flight management computers or FMCs. And the CDU is our interface to the computer. It's how we talk to the computer. Uh, normally it's a two-way communication street so that if we type information into the CDU it goes to the FMC. Information from the FMC can also come to the CDU. On earlier generation airplanes the center CDU would normally receive information from the left FMC but it could not uh, they could not send information to the left FMC. On later model airplanes, it is uh, truly a spare, and it could be used if a CDU were to fail. On the earlier model airplanes, it would just basically be kind of a repeater of the uh, left FMC information that was sent to it. The two FMCs also talk to one another, so that if one FMC has a problem, it can resynchronize and... Uh, correct the problem of the other FMC. Uh, so sometimes you may see that one FMC will uh, stop or have a problem and you might see a scratch pad message saying resyncing uh, other FMC and it uh, takes a couple seconds and they can uh, straighten themselves out by talking to one another. Also when we send information from one control display unit it goes to the its respective FMC and then it in turn goes to the other FMC and then it goes to the other CDU. So if you type something on one side, you'll see it on the other side. The uh, flight management system also has what's called a uh, master uh, FMC. And normally you can see that uh, this switch right in the center here is what's called the FMC master switch. Uh, normally it's left in the left position, like it is now. It's in the left FMC position. And that's normally where we put it during the flight deck preparation. And uh, that allows the left FMC to give information to fly the airplane in LNAV and VNAV uh, to allow the auto throttle system to operate through the EECs to automatically tune the nav radios and to give us our information on our map display. This is where our moving map display comes to us courtesy of the flight management computer and the vertical deviation indicator also comes to us courteous um, through the uh, courtesy of the uh, flight management computer. When we look at the ND on the captain side we're looking at left FMC information when we look at the first officer's ND, 
uh, we're looking at right FMC information. Again, there's that uh, master switch that's located on the forward instrument panel. Again, normally left in the left position. And the this master switch will control the FCCs, the EECs, and the nav radios. And so what that means is that when we fly the airplane in LNAV and VNAV, the left FMC is what's giving information to fly the airplane in LNAV and VNAV. And with the auto throttle engaged, and we climb or descend in VNAV, the auto throttle is getting its information also from the left FMC. The FMC actually controls, it has a thrust management function within the FMC, and the auto throttle is controlled by uh, the flight management computer. You also have instrument source select switches that control which information is displayed on the captain's or the first officer's ND. It's a nav instrument source select switch. And normally the captain is in left FMC and the first officer is in right FMC. We have the ability to switch to a different flight management computer if one were to fail. If both fail, then we go into what's called alternate navigation. It used to be called standby navigation. And that's when we use the CDU position of the switch. More on that will be covered uh, later on in the training series. So suffice to say, uh, when the, all these switches are straight in the 12 o'clock position, that nav switch will be an FMC left for the captain and FMC right for the first officer. Let's take a look at the virtual simulator and uh, see some of this. Uh, we're looking right now at the uh, captain's FMS CDU and the first officer's. We've got a partial picture of the first officer's CDU. Uh, the ICAS right now is uh, displaying some uh, maintenance pages that I had up there. And if we scroll down, we'll see the center CDU. Again, right now the center CDU is on the menu page. And uh, the menu page, again, allows us to get to... Um, this is what's called sometimes a multi-function uh, control display unit or an MCDU because it has more than one function. It, it not only gives us FMC, usually the captain will be having uh, left FMC information and the first officer will be having right FMC information. And we're mainly interested in all the pages that are associated with um, the flight management computer, but there are other sub-modes that you can find by pushing the menu key. And when you push the menu key, it takes you to the main menu page. One of the uh, selections there right at the top is FMC, but you could also select if your airline has ACARS or if you have satellite communications or the airborne condition monitoring system or the central maintenance computer. This is this was mainly put here early on for the for maintenance. They could get in the airplane, sit down in the center seat, and not have to reach over to the captain's CDU or the first officer's CDU. They could just simply come here and go to menu, and they could go to CMC, and that would access the central maintenance computer. The central maintenance computer can be used on the ground or in the air. In the air, you can access it above 10,000 feet, below 10,000 feet. It's inhibited. But above 10,000 feet, you could access any one of the maintenance pages. Um, and that's what I had up when the video first started there. When the uh, virtual sim started, I had the uh, uh, one of the flight control pages up. Uh, these are not um, taught usually to pilots, um, but pilots, especially when they have a 14-hour flight, they tend to find um, <laughs> little things in the aircraft that will uh, amuse them. Uh, as those hours pass by. They have certain duties to do, obviously, as we fly, but uh, once flight plan duties and monitoring duties are completed, there's time to do other things like eat and um, fool around with things. So you can sometimes you can go through these maintenance pages and actually learn a lot from looking at some of these maintenance pages. 
So the menu page is, uh, you'll see there is a simu over here. This is specific to uh, the game simulator, which in this case is iFly 747400, that allows us to uh, select some of the uh, specific uh, functions for the uh, to set in the particular uh, PC, the simulator. And this is the FMC master switch right here. Remember we said that uh, we normally have it in the left position. Uh, you can see what I did here is I just switched it from left to right in flight. If you do that, what you're doing is you're telling the system that you want the right FMC to be the master now. And the right FMC then would fly the airplane in LNAV and VNAV. Uh, remember, it gives information to the EECs for auto throttle operation, to the FCCs for autopilot usage in LNAV and VNAV, and to the NAV radios to be able to auto tune NAV radios. If you do switch from left to right, you will interrupt auto throttle operation, so the auto throttle will disconnect. The thrust management function is part of the FMC, so when you change from left to right, you automatically change to uh, another um, box, if you will, or computer, if you will, to control the auto throttle. And because of that, it will disconnect and you'd have to reconnect it. Of course, normally we just wouldn't flip the switch for the heck of it, but we're just demonstrating it here. To get it back, all we need to do, the auto throttle, that is, is to cycle the arm switch off and then back to arm and that will uh, reconnect the auto throttle. So it's off, and now if we go back to arm, it comes back into the speed mode, speed VNAP path. Again, if I take the switch and put it back to left, again, same thing. We're still flying in LNAV and VNAV. You can see that here, LNAV, VNAV path. But the auto throttle did disconnect, and to reconnect it, I'd have to come back up here, go off, and back to arm again. So the FMC master switch controls the FCCs. That's how we fly the airplane in LNAV and VNAV. Right now it's through the left FMC giving information. It also, the FMC will tune the NAV radios on the NAV rad page. And also for position updating on the position uh, reference page. And it controls the EECs for auto throttle operation as well. So these nav aids that are being either manually tuned or auto tuned, in this case, auto tuned by the it's coming from the, in this case, the left FMC. Also, if I go to the position page and I go to the, uh, and what I did, maybe did that a little fast, but if you go to index, uh, we'll talk about this more in future training videos, but if you go to index and you go to position, you'll go to the position initialization page, and then I went to page two, which is the position reference page. On the position reference page, this is where we can see on page two here what nav stations are being used for position updating. Uh, right now, the GPS is being used for position updating. You can see that down here. We talked about the ND map mode. We talked about this section right here. The uh, GPS is uh, being used for position updating. If we were to take the GPS nav inhibit and push that, it would uh, disable both GPS receivers and then we'd revert to DME DME position updating. So let's see if we do that here. We push that inhibit and then if we gave it more time it would probably find a couple of stations to use DME DME. Right now it's just finding this one station which is called DIK. I can see that right there. Uh, and 
right now it might start to revert using radial DME distance until it can find another nav aid and then it would put the other nav aid right here and then it would be DME DME updating uh, if that sounds confusing you can go to our EFIS ND uh, map uh, briefing and uh, talks about some of these things the main point here is that FMC master switch does control the EECs for the auto throttle operation, the FCCs for flying the airplane in LNAV and VNAV, and the NAV radios, uh, what's being auto-tuned on the NAVRAD page, and uh, also it's being tuned here on the uh, for position updating if GPS were not being used. And now we've enabled the GPS again. The instrument source select switches are used to, uh, again, the captain is normally straight up 12 o'clock, which is FMC left. That means that this map, moving map display, is coming to us from the left FMC. Once we start down in VNAV, we'll get the vertical deviation indicator over here. That's also generated by the left FMC. And of course, the first officer would be uh, on right FMC. Notice I can take the switch and move it to right FMC, and now the right FMC is providing information. I'll get a source select nav switch here, indicating that we're both on the same source. Because I'm on the right FMC, and the first officer's on the right FMC. I went back to left FMC, and when I do, the message goes away. Anytime you're on the same source, you'll get a message, an ICAST message, telling you you're on the same source. Okay, that completes our discussion. And then for an FMS overview, we'll be getting into the CDU and some of the specific pages of the uh, Flight Management System Control Display Unit on future briefings. Let's lower the HUD and go flying. Until our next briefing, keep the blue side up. Captain Al, out.